Joining us now with Reaction is radio talk show host Gina Loudon and former Clinton pollster and Fox News contributor Doug Schoen. Thank you both for being sure. here with me tonight. So obviously Thanks there's a very me. Yeah, there's a very heated current climate of sexual misconduct, sexual harassment, there's allegations and it's going across the board. Do you think we're going to start you know, to see more and more Democrats distance themselves from Bill and Hillary Clinton in light of this? Well, look, uh, Kimberly, oh, okay. my, my sense is that with Bill Clinton, many of the allegations have already been litigated. Mm -hmm. They have uh, been dealt with in an impeachment process or in court. Um, you know, to me, if they're new allegations, fine, let's deal with them. But to go back 20 years to relitigate or or earlier, I just think is a waste of time and energy. I would say this. If you want to talk about Uranium One, mm -hmm. if you want to talk about the dossier, there are a lot of unanswered questions there sure. that I think merit our time. But to go relitigate what Bill Clinton may or may not have done, you know, I, I don't think that's worthwhile. Just one other point. Yes. I worked for Bill Clinton mm -hmm. from 94 to 2000. And what David Axelrod says, and he's a dear friend of mine, but what he says everyone knew, I didn't know okay. the revelations about Monica Lewinsky were news to me mm -hmm. when they came out. Okay, but there were also, and see if Gina, you can hear us now. Um, that, you know, yes, people, I hear you. People were aware of what went on, and I understand about not relitigating or going to pass. However, as a former prosecutor, when a crime has been committed, I don't look the other way just because of the passage of time. To me, when there's allegations of you know, sexual misconduct, not just harassment, but you know, rape, as in the case of Juanita Broderick, which she has made that claim against, you know, the president, you know, shouldn't that be addressed? And what about the Democrats, like, owning up to that in terms of the double standard that they've seemed to have as of late? Well, of course they have a double standard, Kimberly, because if they didn't have a double standard, they wouldn't have any standards at all. This is a transparent attempt on the part of the Democrat Party, now that a Clinton will never be on a ballot again, uh, for them to claim some sort of sexual purity. This, mm -hmm. the party of Clinton, of Wiener, of Franken, and we're supposed to fall for that? They must think voters right. are really stupid if they're going to fall for the Democrat Party now being uh, the party. And, and just like you said, where's the apology to these women that they smeared for all How these they years? If they knew yeah. this was going on, why did they go along with it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, she makes a, you know, a great point. I mean, when you see people that have been savaged in the press, in the media, and by, quite frankly, to Hillary Clinton herself, mm -hmm. it's very disturbing. And I mean, do you think it played a role in the fact that she was, uh, you know, defeated in well, 2016? It, it, it may well have played a role, but I think the person people voted against for a lot of very good reasons, was Secretary Hillary Clinton. I think if she'd listened to Bill Clinton campaign more in the Midwest, mm -hmm. focused on working class voters, talked about jobs, she would have done a lot better than she did trying to mimic the Obama campaign from 2008 and 2012. And you know, you mentioned Juanita Broderick. Mm -hmm. As a prosecutor, you surely would know that when there are multiple stories, multiple accounts uh, of, of what happened happened in an event, it's a much tougher case to litigate when the person who allegedly was violated has told different stories at different times. Okay, well, she maintains that she also gave what's called a fresh complaint at the time. She complained of it. She had the physical injury to the lip that she said, he said, you know, put some ice on that. Mm -hmm. uh, look, I mean, the bottom line is it's not just Bill Clinton. What Hillary Clinton did was wrong in the way that she treated those women and then expected that she was going to go on to be, you know, president uh, of the United States, given her abhorrent behavior. Yeah, the way to have done this with any legitimacy, Kimberly, would have been for the Democrat Party to come out as a party and apologize to these women. If they're so concerned about the long term, the post traumatic stress mm -hmm. of women who go through these sorts of things, as they say every day, right, whenever they right. can get in the news, um, trying to take some moral high ground now, then they should be concerned about the fact that these women are still traumatized by what happened to them under that administration. And they've been continually traumatized as all of their allegations have been swept over the under the rug for all of these years. And it's just too convenient a time now for them to come out and say, oh, wait a minute, we are the party of sexual purity suddenly. The public isn't going to buy this. Okay, now, you know, in an earlier segment, Doug, you and I were talking about this through the break. Yeah. Geraldo Rivera was on, 
good friend here, and he was seeming to kind of give a, a pass by saying, well, wait a second, Conyers is older, you know, he, so what if he had the meeting essentially in his underwear? I'm sure it wasn't, you know, sexual yeah. in nature, but just because he doesn't look, look like David Beckham in his uh, underwear, then it's okay to do that? Look, I, don't, I, 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 don't I, I, I got that a standard. different view of this, Kimberly. This is a real-time, real-world event. Let's let the Ethics Committee investigate, and if the facts are as compromising as you're now suggesting and many reports have suggested, I'm not sure there's a place for him in the House. I'm not sure there's a place uh, for Al Franken. Right. And the reports about uh, Joe Barton, mm -hmm. I think, uh, on the Republican side, also uh, merit investigation by the Ethics Committee. Put another way, I think we need to be nonpartisan about it, not try to cast one party or the other party Fair as enough. the party of sex. Mm -hmm. If it happens and it's egregious as these incidents suggest may have occurred, let's investigate and take the appropriate action. Yes, regardless of partisan Correct. politics, it should have the same standard and the same due process, right. Gina, you know, for either side. Correct. Uh, that, that's the bottom line. Yeah, and, and this is there's a really important psychological component, too, for these women, um, I think, as we're going through this process, that, that they are uh, validated, that they know that some of these things are, have been investigated. But we also need to be very careful as a public mm -hmm. to make sure that we make the, we make the, distinct, uh, the, the distinction, I guess, uh, between evidence and facts yes. versus feelings and allegations, because there is mm -hmm. a distinct difference, and we can't keep meshing them together like the Democrats. Democrat Party seems to want to do a Look, lot of times. I, I, to me, this isn't partisan, Kimberly. I think yeah. you're exactly right. I think, though, Gina makes a very good point. We need to investigate allegations, see the full totality of what did or didn't happen, and make judgments there. We can't rush to judgment I based agree. on partial press reports that are not in any way full accounts of what did or didn't happen. No, you know, you bring up a great point, and the problem is also with the passage of time, Gina, when you see it a situation like uh, the Roy Moore case where there's a, you know a period of behavior that's been alleged over a very long period of time it makes it very tough to go back to be able to examine the veracity of it and get those statements it's not something can happen you know overnight to be able to figure it out it should be taken very seriously like I said on all sides Yes, it should be taken seriously, but it shouldn't be tried, as you both know, in the court of public opinion. Public yeah. opinion. And I think we insult the public, frankly, when, uh, when, when television pundits or, or the media decides in general that it can try this, uh, you know, itself and decide that all of a sudden now this election should be overturned for an entire state. I think that's a very dangerous precedent to set, and I think that you'd see massive public outrage if uh, something like that were to yeah, actually I, happen. I, I, I think I it needs to be adjudicated. Very simply, we're going to have an election in Alabama on mm -hmm. December 12th. Yeah. The people will be able to decide what they want to believe, what they don't want to believe, and I hope the Senate right. seats the winner of that election, whoever it may be. And then if there's an investigation that needs to continue, of so course, be it. so be it with due process exactly. and evidence that is proffered Correct. and evaluated. So Correct. we can also make some kind of distinguish, uh, distinguishing factors in terms of the spectrum of statements and then also sexual misconduct or sexual assault, which is criminal in nature and should be prosecuted if appropriate and relevant. Such a pleasure to have you both Couldn't here Couldn't agree tonight. more, Kimberly. Right, Thank you. Thank you so much, Gina and Doug.